Now you don't have to buy the business Toro courses. You have this play and our good buddy, Corey, that dropped a master class on the car rental business. Just so you know, uh, Herb, man, if you ever need anybody in that space, that brother- He knows that well. Own dealership, Corey Goodwin. Love that brother to death. San Diego, I don't even know if he's in the room. Uh, if you are, bro, save me if you're in the room. This man put together, he took all the chicken, left the bones, put in his personal experience and gave like a three, four hour masterclass on the car rental business and how not only just to use it on Toro, high air car, Uber Eats, all of these different things. And then like how to do your own private rentals, how it leads into building uh, networking opportunities and how, you know, all of the things that they don't tell you, they just talk about quote unquote Toro or Ecom only Amazon. Uh, man, Corey, I just got to publicly just tell you how amazing you did on that call last month. And if you guys haven't checked it out, uh, connect with Corey in the mentorship and he's your guy, anything with that, connect with him. He's a servant leader and he's getting ready to blow up on YouTube. So Corey, if you hear me, bro, love you, man. I love it. I'm about to check that call out. So, I mean, I won't beat a dead horse here, but I got three methods for you guys. So method number one would be a transfer. Now, what I like about the transfer is that you're able to take, if the bit, if, the, if you're operating your business and if you have the vehicle that you purchased on the personal side, you're able to refinance it over on the business side. I know this because we have, again, a client that did it <clears throat> through a business banker. This is why I wanted to preface everything through the importance of having a business banker and having a relationship. Uh, can you do it without them? Yes, but they already, they already have an understanding of where your file is and how your business is set up. So you can take the PG route, which of course it's going to be uh, refinancing because Bank of America, you guys know it's not going to be a non-PG. Let's just be real. So it'll be on the PG side, but what ends up happening is that now that that vehicle is reporting over on the business column side, going forward, if you go into a dealership or going forward, if you are, uh, yeah, a dealership, if you're purchasing, purchasing a car on dealership and they're on the application, sometimes they'll, they'll have you list some of your assets and some of the things that you own on the business side. Guess what's over on the business column side that's now being reported for business credit. Now, full disclosure, not every bank is going to report that payment over, over, over to the personal credit side anymore. So I hope that you guys caught that. You also eliminated that, what we call like that installment loan that was over on the personal credit column, that liability. We now shifted it over to the business credit side or the, the business side, essentially. And so that's not being reported. So now that kind of frees up, if you wanted to take that route, that frees up your, your personal liabilities. And what it also does is that it also puts a staple inside of your business credit profile. Because now I remember cash flow, credit, and collateral. We have a little bit of collateral now that we can work off of, we can kind of flaunt to a bank if we need to kind of get, you know, juicy with it. Method number two is luxury vehicles. Now, this is a non-PG and a PG method right here. Now, this is more for established businesses. What you want to do is when you step into a dealership, and I know that maybe Corey already touched on this, commercial financing and the fleet department. Mm -hmm. That's essentially who you want to be speaking to right there. It's going to serve you far better if you have at least two years of taxes that you can show because this will, this will help. Again, remember, if you have cash, or at least if you can show that you have some cash, that usually makes the PG go away because the bank feels safer lending out to you. So, mm. oh, okay, they got six months of reserves. Okay, we're good. We can, we can, we can offer a non-PG to them. Same thing with tax returns. Okay, their business is doing good, right? For those of us that maybe aren't there yet, you're still in year one of business and you've been building up your trade lines. The magic number is eight to 10. I have eight here, but really eight to 10. Eight is just the baseline. Eight to 10 trade accounts with one, at least one of those accounts being a financial account. So that can be a business credit card. That can be a uh, a shell gas card, right? Gas cards. That's why I like them so much, the fleet cards, because that would be considered more on the financial side because that's going to report over to Experian and Equifax. And that's what you want to start building out. Not just in Brass Street. Remember, those accounts reporting for at least six months. At least six months. Have there are there instances where you can get it, you know, with less? Hey, Irv, I got eight accounts. Can I go in on day sixty once all those accounts are reporting? Yes, but don't be surprised if they ask you for a personal guarantee. So just something to keep in mind here. And then I didn't add it on here, but you also want to ask them for a corporate resolution form when you're at the bank. 
I'm sorry, at the uh, at the uh, dealership. The reason why you ask them for for a corporate resolution form is because you want them to know, hey, we're going to be setting this up on title, and the person actually purchasing the vehicle is the business. It's not me. I'm just a representative. So the corporate resolution form, and maybe I can bring this on next week's call, but the corporate resolution form is going to have you listed as the rep that's picking up the car on behalf mm. of the business. But the business that's is good. Actually- that's a gem, guys. That that's a gem, guys. That's a gem. We got the corporate gem in the chat. The that's corporate resolution form, like if you guys, I know Ally, a, a, lot, a lot of people like Ally, right? Ally Financial. Um, if you just Google Ally Financial corporate resolution form, like you'll see, it's like, it's like a two page form. And then you'll be able to see how it's broken down. Hey, I'm Irv, but I'm buying the car on behalf of Irv Official. I am the CEO, but it's not going to be under my name, right? And then lastly, method three, this is how you leverage your credit to not have the PG. I know that sounds counterintuitive and it's different from this. Here's what I mean. Typically, when you're getting a vehicle in your business's name, you're still not holding title. And even if you're getting it through a business loan, the business, uh, the bank holds oh the title. Oh, my God, on that. bro. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> oh, man. You're dropping this one. <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they hold it as leverage. And so I'm going to give you guys two different routes. For the safe people in the room, your business line of credit is as good as cash. Remember, it's real cash value. This is why I've been intentional about the words that I've been giving you this entire presentation. Real cash value on the yeah. business line of credit. This means that I am taking a withdrawal on that money, the same way that we would if we wanted to use it for real estate. But in this case, we're using it for vehicle equipment financing, right? That money hits my account. It's as good as cash. I can go out, do with it as I please, deposit it, wire it, where, however I want to do it, right? I can use that to purchase the vehicle, let's say at an auction or at a private sale. Guess who holds title at that point since there's no lien attached to it? My business does, not me. My business does. No PG. But you mm-hmm. got there by leveraging your good credit because the business line of credit was a PG. The second route that you can take for those of us that are a bit more on the edge, you guys already know how to, how to, how to, rip, some, how, how to rip some funds off of some of these business credit cards. MS plays are wild. I don't have to tell you guys. I know that Rad's touched on it. I know yeah. that the the one of the best in the game, Dub Washington, is probably yeah. the best in the game that I've seen. He's yeah. showing you guys how to rip some of those funds, how to how to pretty much turn credit into cash, would yeah. be your other route of how you can purchase some of these vehicles. And again, that title is going to be given to you in its entirety. Mm-hmm. I hope that you guys caught that third method because I think that especially if you're sitting with you know a good sized you know amount of business credit, business line of credit that would be a good look for you that you can kind of bypass this and then you don't have to worry about this. Now, these are all three different methods, but again, we had different flavors in the room. And so that I 